before I start cooking what might be for dinner tonight, uh, actually, this is a meal I call a BLD. It's a meal you could serve for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I want to give a shout out and tell you guys about our appliance sponsor for our season 11. Uh, it is Frigidaire Gallery, and they make these beautiful items that are filling our kitchen this season. Um, you guys know that I am the 30 minute girl, right? I am all about quick and easy meals, and these bad boys, well, they are built to save time and get meals on the table faster. My fridge is gorgeous, but I love a double-decker oven. Like, it, it gives me chicken skin, makes me sweat a little bit in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided that today I should make a meal that shows off my brand new set of ovens, plural. So I'm making a five ingredient meal that's actually inspired by my husband's favorite meal and it's kind of a mashup of a breakfast or brunch classic, the frittata, and uh, my husband's absolute favorite meal on the planet Earth, carbonara. Uh, a Roman recipe of bacon and egg spaghetti. Um, now, incidentally, when you make proper carbonara, the pasta dish, it does not, never should, include cream. Not ever. When you're making a frittata, we are going to use milk or cream as one of our five ingredients. A five ingredient meal is something I'm committed to all season long this season on our show. And the pantry um, for this, I keep very basic. Olive oil, salt, pepper or red pepper, and garlic. So those are things that I don't count in the five ingredients. So other than, in this case, salt, pepper, garlic, your five ingredients are stale bread, ingredient number one. Ingredient number two, the eggs. These are your building blocks, so this is cheap and cheerful. The bacon, or in this case, pancetta. Pancetta is rolled cured meat, similar to bacon, but it is not smoked. Uh, as I said, milk or cream. And of course, the king of all cheeses, Parmigiano Reggiano, or if you like it very salty and tangy, Pecorino Romano. So your choice on the cheeses. So here's our five building blocks. Let's come on down here. Um, for the pancetta, when I bring it home from the market, if I'm going to make this meal the same day, uh, I throw it into the freezer for a few minutes before I start slicing it. Um, it just firms it up so that it's a little easier for you to get your knife through it and we're gonna cut slabs for about a third to a half of a pound, a nice fat chunk, about an inch and a half chunk. And then all I do is stack a couple of slices at a time on top of each other, cut strips, and then turn it sideways and make a little dice out of it. Oh, about a quarter of an inch dice. Then we're going to get a skillet nice and hot for a dozen eggs and to feed four adults. We're going to use a 12 inch skillet that can transfer to an oven at 400 degrees. We've got the oven preheating, one of my two ovens. Do you know I don't even have two ovens in my home? Isn't that silly? <laughs> like, do you know come Thanksgiving, I'm like, oh God, I wish I was cooking this at the studio. <laughs> Luckily, great friends like Frigidaire Gallery give me better equipment so that I'm happier when I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're almost there, people. Then what we need to do is let the fat render. We render the fat out in olive oil, and then we're going to add our stale bread and coat it in that. And then we're going to add our eggs over the top. So the first thing we gotta do is get the olive oil going, enough to coat the bottom of the pan, crank the heat up to about medium high, and get the pancetta working. Now, if I know I need a third of a pound for a recipe, I always buy a half of a pound, because once that renders and it's nice and crispy, I'm gonna take a handful out and eat it. <laughs> Just sharing, because we're here. Um, so I'm gonna get the garlic crushed, but don't put it in too early. It'll burn and bitter. So with your stale bread, you're gonna wanna trim away some of that crust. A little bit's fine, but especially the bottom, it's just too tough for a strata to ever get tender. So this, I grind up and hello, that's how they make breadcrumbs, people. Panko, you know what that is? Pulse rather than on. That's all. So we're making a carbonara style strata frittata. We've got our stale bread ready. Our pancetta is rendering out. Bacon and eggs are the star ingredients here. When you're cracking eggs, crack them on the counter for a couple of reasons. Less chance if there is anything like a salmonella or something on the outside of the egg or any impurities, 
it'll stay there. It won't fall into the bowl or be on the side of your bowl. And because, of course, if you lose a little piece of, of shell, they'll crack easier. And if you lose a little piece of shell, it'll probably drop there rather than in there. If you get shell in your bowl uh, with the eggs, you know what shell loves? Shell. Use this as a magnet. Put the large piece of shell down into the bowl instead of fishing around with your finger, which is gross. Uh, you know, just put the shell in and it's just like a magnet. Little pieces of shell will come right up and stick to the big piece of shell. Yeah, shell loves shell. So, this smells like it's rendered perfectly. My nose knows. So now I'm gonna add the bread and let it start soaking up all of those great ingredients while we're cracking eggs. And I'm going to grate in a couple of fat cloves of garlic. Over the break, I sprinkled in some coarse black pepper. Pepper has oils in it, and when you heat pepper, the flavor expands throughout all of the drippings. So you throw it in there and toss it around. And now we're going to coat our bread with the drippings, the olive oil and the drippings from the pancetta. Oh God, garlic bread with bacon, are you kidding? <laughs> like that should be two of the major food groups. <laughs> okay, so going back to the eggs, cracking them on the counter, less chance of getting shell into the bowl, but we know how to fix that too. If that happens and it just did, there you go, come to mama. And my husband eats a lot of dishes that are over easy eggs or, un or not cooked yolk. So I do spend more money on eggs. I like to know where my eggs come from. I buy the best quality egg I can find at the farmer's market or the grocery store, whichever I'm at at the time. Oh no, am I out of my peens? I'm out of my peens, bring me one! <laughs> I wish I had that at home. <laughs> There's little elves in the kitchen there cooking for our guests. Thank you, darling. That's Welcome. Grant. He's going to make dessert later. I just put a splash of milk, half and half of cream, whatever you put in your coffee, uh, into the bowl. When you're whipping eggs, poke the yolks, and they'll whip up quicker, and you won't be chasing the yolks around the bowl. And we're going to season this up with salt and pepper, of course. And at home, instead of calling for the, the culinary team, it's, John! <laughs> But he rarely answers. He says, oh, sorry, I had my headphones on. <laughs> He's so full of it. <laughs> Just didn't feel like getting up. One cup of cheese, parmigiano or pecorino romano, is our fifth ingredient. Incorporate your cheese. 12-inch skillet. We filled it with four cups of stale bread cubes in that garlic pancetta mixture. And now we're going to pour this over the top. Let it settle and then transfer it to the oven. We have our five ingredient carbonara style uh, strata frittata. It's a great, really cheap and cheerful, delicious menu item that you could serve breakfast, brunch, lunch, or dinner, a BLD I call it. Um, and I always let the frittatas rest. It'll take about 18 minutes in a hot 400 degree oven for that to get nice and firm. Then let it rest on a cooling rack until it comes back to almost room temperature. If you want to serve a salad, you can make it as simple as a sixth ingredient, arugula. I just squirt a little lemon and drizzle olive oil on some spicy greens, and that's it. To serve it up, quarter it up. And then you toss the greens with the lemon, sea salt, and olive oil and pile it right on top. It's beautiful, simple meal.